Come on, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. All the glory. Oh, all the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we lift your Oh, because you're great. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Lord, we give you glory tonight. When we honor, yes, we do. Lord, we lift our hands to you. Oh, as we lift your holy name, we bless you, God. You deserve the 
that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver. She watched him as he grew 
of a great hill Mary watched in silent pain Her father's plans fulfilled And at his feet she knelt that day As tears ran down her face For the cross now held the truth The place where they had laid the baby down to sleep. The angel told the story of what she had believed. She saw the stone was rolled away. It was just an empty grave. the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. If you're fighting, striving for the right, you shall wear a robe and crown. I'm gonna wear a crown, gonna wear a crown, when that trumpet sounds, when that trumpet sounds, oh, I'm gonna wear a crown, just as soon as my feet strike, Zion, lay down my heavy Burn up, put on the robe and glory Shout, tell them the story Now we shall wear robes and crowns Well, was she therefore you know not the day When the Lord shall call your soul away If you're fighting, striving for the right You shall wear robe and crown I'm gonna wear a crown Gonna wear a crown When that trumpet sounds She has the feet strike, Zion, lay down the heavy burn on, put on the robe in glory, shout, tell the story, now we shall wear robes and crown. We're watching, therefore, you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. If you're fighting, striving for the right, you shall wear robes and crown. I'm going to wear a crown. Gonna wear the crown when that trumpet sounds. When that trumpet sounds, oh, I'm gonna wear a crown. Just as soon as my feet strike, Zion, lay down the heavy burden. I put on the robe and glory. Shout, tell the story. Gonna sit down beside King Jesus, tell him how I made it. Over, put on the robe and glory. Shout, tell the story. Now we shall wear. don't know that I've ever preached about the wise men before, but I'm going to tonight. Okay? Matthew chapter 2. 
I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, please. The scripture says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Leave that up, please, Bernardo, and let's pray. Father, we are so thankful again, God, to be in your house tonight, God. So thankful, God, for this time of year and so thankful for your blessings. Father, I pray that you would give us wisdom and knowledge, God, right now, and help us to dive into your word, God, and learn from your scriptures, God. Learn from verses, God, we have read a million times. God, reveal yourself to us right now, we pray, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Give God a big hand clap, please. This is definitely a Christmas message, but I want to kind of study it a little bit with you, if that's okay. This version of Scripture refers to these men as wise men. Other versions refer to them as the Magi, or a a variation of that term. And as I was thinking about these wise men, this magi, who were they? What were they? And why were they following a star looking for baby Jesus? Something interesting that really jumped out at me, especially from the NLT version, it says they were from eastern lands. Somebody say amen means they weren't locals, right? They had to come a distance. And I've heard it explained before why they were following a star. I've heard the astrologists try to explain this. I've heard numerous people trying to explain this. But these men, according to Scripture, They were following a star. Amen. When you look up information on these folks, you find that they were classified as Gentiles. Why? Because they simply, or according to this commentary, they did not belong to the commonwealth of Israel. As I said before, they were not locals. The Jews regarded not Christ. But these three individuals, for some reason, did. These Gentiles inquired about this Jesus. Now, I'm just going to throw something in here. It tells me, or it speaks to me, that these people, these gentlemen, these folk, from this eastern land, they must have known something about a Jesus. Not sure exactly, you got some of you Bible scholars in here, not sure exactly what that was, but it makes me wonder if they had heard all the prophecies of a baby being born. These gentlemen, if you will, The commentary says that they were scholars. Maybe that's where we get the term wise men. They were smart fellers. Somebody say amen. One commentary said they dealt in the arts or curious arts. Meaning, I guess they were open to things like stars leading them to the birth of a Jesus. Somebody say amen. Um. They were kind of individuals who were, one commentary said, were probably Arabic. I don't know. You guys help me out here. I'm just following this, okay, because this is the way it came to me. Arabic folks. Now, we're in 2015. I'm not sure I'm not smart enough. Were Arabic folks back in that time the same as Arabic folks today? Yep, pretty much. 
Not sure what those Arabic or those Eastern folk believed in back in that time. But these folks were looking for something. They were looking for whatever this star was leading them to. And the interesting thing is, is when I read the scriptures, when they came into this area, there was a king there. Does anybody remember the king's name? This king inquired of them. Now, what I find amazing is King Herod was from around that area. Somebody say amen. King Herod, if you read the story appropriately, he brings in all the religious leaders. He brings in the priests, and he sits down, and he has a conversation with them, asking them to give him some Bible, if you will, as to where this Jesus is or what's going to happen. And they quote some Bible to him or they quote some Old Testament scripture to him telling him what the Bible says. It basically says, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. So King Herod knew something was going on Somebody say amen. These three wise gentlemen are coming in from, I'll just say, an eastern area, following a star, looking for this Jesus. King Herod brings in all the religious elite, and he actually speaks to these guys, asking them, where is this Jesus? So where exactly is it that you're going? Now, King Herod, as we know, according to Scripture, he, I think, was intimidated by this Jesus because... Well, he was a baby, first of all, but, you know, you don't want to, you know, incite the religious zealots. Somebody say amen. You don't want to incite those people who actually believe in this garbage. You know what I'm saying? You don't really want to get them riled up. So we know the story that Herod was looking for information, trying to find out where this baby Jesus was. And when he spoke to the wise men, he said, when you go and find out where he's at, will you come back and tell me? And we all know that Herod was lying. We all know that the things he told the wise men weren't true. He wasn't excited about the birth of Jesus. He didn't want to give things to Jesus. He wanted to know where he was because he wanted to tear him down. He wanted to destroy him early on. But the Bible says that these three wise men, they, I guess, were wise enough to read through Herod. Because it says that they didn't come back. They didn't go tell tell Herod anything. And one commentary I was reading said something about Herod being a little upset because he was fooled or he was tricked by these wise men. Somebody say amen. So I wonder what Herod was thinking when he thought, okay, here come these Arabic folk in our land. They're looking for this Jesus. I wonder if I can get some information out of them. Maybe they don't know me as well as other people know me, so they'll give me this information. But when they went and saw the baby Jesus, they left. They went on their way. They didn't go back. Now, as I was reading through these scriptures, and you know, sometimes, (coughs) excuse me, when you read through scriptures slowly, certain things really start to pop out to you. And I could not help, Brother Lonnie, but to take what I'm reading here in Matthew 1 and 2 and kind of compare it to what we're seeing today. The reason I say that is because during these first two chapters, you read a lot about angels appearing to people. You read a lot about people having dreams. You read a lot about spirits speaking to people, telling them what's going to happen next. You read about these wise men who are watching a star and they're following, and the amazing thing about this star is, is when they get to where Jesus is, the star stops. Somebody say amen. So when I was reading all this, I couldn't help but think, was there something going on that people couldn't see? Help me out here a minute. Was there something really going on that the people did not fully understand. Herod truly did not understand what this Jesus was. 
He knew that people were coming into his area. They didn't really, he didn't really know why. He called for the religious leaders to come together, Lord, and they told him that the prophets told of, you know, this king being born in Bethlehem, amen. And if you know anything about the Jewish folks, they weren't looking for a Jesus to be born in a manger. They were looking for pomp and circumstance when the king arrived, amen. They were looking for something showy and something amazing. But one commentary said that Jesus, the king of all glory, he chose not to come in in all of his pomp and circumstance. He chose to come in under the radar. He come in, he decided to come in as not somebody that we would look at and think was a king. He came in as just a child. He came in born simply in a manger, simply in some place that nobody would ever expect to find him. And the amazing thing, Charles, is this. Here's the spiritual aspect of this, I think. The people who should have known that Jesus was coming into the world, they didn't know. The people who knew the prophecies couldn't see him. The people who had studied the word of God for years and years and years and years, they could not accept the fact that he was born in a manger. Somebody say amen. And you know it all throughout Jesus' life, they worked to do what? They worked to kill him. They worked to destroy them, him. They, they worked to uh, you know, put him away early on. Why? Because they did not want to accept a Jesus like that. They were looking for something amazing. Joseph had an angel speak to him. Mary had angels speak to him, to her. John the Baptist's parents had angels speak to them. Somebody say amen. These, you know, all these people that understood Jesus, something spiritual, something miraculous began to take place. Somebody say amen. A scripture verse came to mind. It said, he came into the world and the world knew him not. Can I say this before I get any further into the scripture? I believe Jesus could show up today and people wouldn't know who he was. I believe Jesus could be walking the earth today and we wouldn't know who he was. Pastor Wayne, I don't know about that. I'm not so sure about that. I'm just wondering because here it is during this time when they desperately needed a Savior. Somebody say amen. When the church was out of whack, when government was out of whack, when the rules and the laws of the church were just so unbearable, when Jesus arrived, nobody knew he had come on the scene except for those weirdos. Am I preaching this okay? except for the people that had been written off. Are you hearing what I'm saying? By those religious leaders. Somebody help me tonight. Only the people, well, like these wise men, only the people that they were willing to look for a sign that Jesus had shown up. One commentary said, that they looked at this star, and I guess the way they read the stars was when a star did something like what this star did, it represented that something amazing was about to take place. Somebody say amen. That somebody of importance was about to be born. Amen. And when they saw that star, they immediately began to follow that star. Amen. And they followed that star exactly to the point to where it stopped. Now, Pastor Wayne, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. Here's the spiritual thing of it. Saints, I believe we are living in a day kind of like this of Jesus' birth. We are living in a time where, Norman, our religious folks, our spiritual leaders of the world, their thinking is so far up here that they're not even paying attention to what's going on spiritually. They're so worried about rules and laws and building programs. Somebody say amen. They're so worried about the dress code, if you will. They're so worried about people being perfect, if you will. They're so worried about all this crazy stuff that they're not paying attention to what's going on in the spiritual realm all around them. Somebody hear me tonight. 
I believe this, saints of God, if you want to survive in these last days, if you want to be ready to go when Jesus arrives this time, you had better be in touch with the spiritual realm just a little bit. Pastor Way, what does it mean to be in touch with the spiritual realm? It means that God speaks to you from time to time. It means that God whispers in your ear from time to time. Now, Pastor Wayne, if I went around telling people that God speaks to me, they would think I was crazy. Can I say something? Congratulations. You're in good company. Somebody say amen. Pastor Wayne, if I told people that I was having dreams that I believe God was giving to me, they would think I was crazy. Let me say it again. Congratulations. You're in good company. Amen. Because you see, these people, when God was about to do something amazing, he revealed it unto his people. Amen. He revealed it through his word that he spoke to them directly, and he revealed it to them in dreams. You know what the amazing thing is, Misty? is that when God speaks to us, what do we do with it? Jason, here comes the spiritual side of things, bub. What do we do with it when God speaks to us? Donna, we really shouldn't scratch our heads and say, am I losing it? Did I eat too much last night? Somebody say amen. Every now and then I'll get an email or a text message saying, Pastor Wayne, I had a dream. Anybody ever have dreams? I have dreams. If you're like my wife, the dreams are just wacko. Amen. I really think it's a woolen thing because her brother has dreams just like these, and I mean, they are wacko. Somebody say amen. But there have been times that the dreams she has had, it's been a warning from God. And when she has those dreams and she tells the individual that she believes it's for, it's amazing how accurate the dream is. Somebody say amen. Now, yeah, some dreams are wacko and some dreams are crazy, but some dreams are from God. Somebody say amen. Some dreams are God speaking to you. Please listen to this. Some dreams are God speaking to you when at a time when you're quiet when you're not questioning him, when you're not doubting him, and when you're not trying to overthink him. Mom, do you remember years ago, you told me this. It was when I still live with you guys out there in Glencoe. I was seeking after the Holy Ghost. And I've talked to some of you about receiving or about seeking after the Holy Ghost before. But when I was seeking after the Holy Ghost, I really had a hard time receiving it. Because, Brother Roger, I was overthinking it. I was making it more difficult than what it really needed to be, Brother Ed. I, I was worried about people seeing me and wondering if I was faking, amen. And I, I was worried about, you know, if, if it did come out, how would it be perceived by the people? And Mom, I don't know if you remember, but I remember you telling me one time, she said, Wayne, you were sleeping in your room and I heard you speaking in tongues. She might say, I don't remember that because she's getting senile, but she did. Amen. <laughs> I remember her saying that. And I remember asking somebody about that. It's like, is it true that somebody can speak in tongues in their dreams or in, while they're sleeping before they speak it when they're awake? And they said, yes. And the, the reason they gave it to me, Donna, was is that, Wayne, because when you're awake, you're overthinking it. Wayne, you're making it more difficult than what it really needs to be. You heard Jack say it the other night, and you've heard other people say it. It's a gift. Somebody say amen. It's something that God simply wants you to have. Amen. And can I tell you what kind of a gift it is? It is a spiritual gift. Amen. It's something that you and I actually need during these last days. Amen. We need to be in contact with the Spirit of God. Why? Because the Spirit of God will direct every footstep we take. The Spirit of God will speak to us. Lori, the Spirit of God will tell us when something's about to happen. Doesn't the Bible say somewhere, and I'm not going to get off into this bad side of things, but Brother Roger, doesn't it say somewhere that even the very elect 
Anybody want to finish that? They'll be what? They'll be deceived. And Donna, do you know how they're going to be deceived? Because they're looking at it through eyes and through this thing inside our skull. How many of you know that when Jesus was born in a manger, the elect, the elite, couldn't understand it? It didn't make sense to them. They couldn't look at a baby lying in a manger in a barn and somehow figure out that that was the son of the living God. Somebody say amen. They would simply not accept that. Amen. So God's going to come back here sometime soon. And I got a feeling that the same way as it was back then, because they're not in touch with that spiritual side of things, they're going to look at Jesus and say, nah, that was a joke. There was something that jumped out at me. Moses had to go into Egypt, didn't he? For a while. Why did he go into Egypt? Because daddy got a word, right? That they're about to die. That they're about to kill them, run into Egypt and hide there for a while. Why did Moses go into Egypt? Somebody say Amen. Why did that happen? Why did Joseph go into Egypt? Somebody say amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Why did all those things happen? The Bible says that Jesus did come out of Egypt, right? When everything became safer, amen, he did come out. Now, I'm just wondering, I'm just speculating. If I'm reading this in scriptures, somebody say amen, and I'm starting to pick up on things, amen. I'm wondering if the enemy hasn't already picked up on some things. I'm wondering if the enemy's not preparing. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. I'm wondering if the enemy's not preparing an antichrist somewhere over in the Middle East somewhere. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Maybe somewhere down around in the Egypt area. Amen. Why? Because you know what? He'll bring an antichrist on the scene. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. He'll bring an antichrist on the scene that people will believe is the son of God. Why? Because he's going to bring him in the way that those people back then wanted the Christ to come in. Just too much. Pastor, you're stretching it just a little bit. Hey, if you're in touch with the spiritual side of God, if you're in touch with the Holy Ghost of God, you can't help but see that there are people missing what God is doing in these last days. You can't help but see it. You can't help but notice it, Brian. You can't help but see how people, whole families are coming in and they're being saved. The Bible says in the last days. Oh, my goodness. His spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. Somebody say amen. People will be coming into the house of God, and they'll realize that God had been tugging on them for years. Amen. But the spirit of Satan, the spirit of the enemy, has had them bound for years. Why? Because they have believed a lie. Amen. There will be people coming into the house of God, and at the same time, there will be people that have been in the house of God for years falling asleep. Ah, oh, Pastor Wayne, this is too deep for a Tuesday night, bud. This is too real for a Tuesday night. Can you see how my mind is working this Christmas season? Saints, I believe something's on the horizon, amen. And I'm not a crazy person. You know why I'm not a crazy person? Because I remember back in the late 70s, early 80s, people that I thought were crazy teaching me about this in a Sunday school class. Somebody say amen. And here I am, 44 years of age, and I see it starting to take place, amen. I'm starting to feel something down in my soul, and it's telling me something is about to happen. Now, these guys, when I read about them, Ed, they weren't your normal folk. I know we got a bunch of weirdos in this place tonight, amen. I say that in love, I really do. But these folks were the people that the church people shook their heads at. You ever hear this in the Catholic Church, Brother Isaac? These are the people that the church was shaking their head at. You've heard me say years ago, Lori and I stood in front of a preacher who was preaching a revival service down at Newport. And the man said to us, and it was too early on for us to really believe what he was saying, he said, Wayne, you'll, 
go and reach the what? You're going to minister to the forgotten. Some of you have heard me say that before. And back then, that was cool that a preacher was prophesying that over me. But I really didn't understand what it meant, Dave. I really, in my own mind, could not see it coming to pass. I really, in my own mind, thought, man, I hope this is something amazing. I hope it means I'm going to be overseer of a state. Or a region, somebody say amen, or something like that. That's just your mind racing. I heard T.D. Jakes talking a little bit today about God revealing things to you, amen, how God speaks to you spiritually and somehow he'll reveal it to you over time. And sometimes when God starts to reveal things to you, Donna, over time, guess what? You're really not paying attention to actually what God is doing. And Donna, can I say something to you? The first time I met you over there in the fellowship hall, I thought the Lord was messing with me, amen? I thought the enemy had sent in one of his best, amen? I thought, Lord, how in the world am I going to help this one, amen? This one's messed up. I love you. I'm serious, you know? But the Spirit kept saying, work with her. Work on her. Help her. Be tough with her, but work with her. Help her. Don't let her go. Assist her. Mm. Other people, Donna. God said, I know they're driving you crazy, Wayne. Yes, they are. I know they sound messed up, Wayne, but work with them. Help them. Try your best. Somebody say amen. Why? Why? Spirit told me to do that, Lorena, and I kept on doing it, amen. And I got to tell you, this church does not look like your typical Church of God church. Somebody say amen. It's a little bit different, amen. But can I tell you what I feel in here just as much as I go to those big Church of God cathedrals? I can feel the presence of God in this sanctuary. Somebody say amen. And you know what he's dealing with, Brother Roger? He's dealing with people that don't look like what we expect them to look like. Mm. I'm wondering, Misty, if some years ago, if we didn't take all the people that could really have brought something amazing into the house of God, I wonder if we didn't just take them and push them out because of the way they looked. I'm wondering if we didn't take them and just push them out because they were a little weird. Are you hearing me? And saints, I'm going to tell you something. I believe we've done that over the years. I believe God has brought them to the doorstep. And because we were just like the church during Jesus' day, somebody say amen. We looked at them and said, you don't fit the mold. You don't look the way we Pentecostals should look. You need to go find yourself another church, amen. And you know what that's done to those people over the years, Joan? It's ran them off. God must have made a mistake, Donna. He doesn't really want me. He he was messing with me. He was joking with me. But Dave Turner, even you've said it, right? (laughs) God still speaks to a drunk. Jason was texting me the other day, Wayne, God still speaks to a heroin addict. Mm -hmm. Still speaks to an atheist. He's speaking, saints. Listen to what I'm saying. He's doing what the scripture says he would do. He's calling those people. And how is he doing it? He's doing it through the spirit of God. Mm. I'm not getting into those heroin houses, those crack houses, those whatever, but he's getting into it. Somebody say, man, he's speaking to their soul. He's speaking to their mind. Amen. They, they're seeing something. Amen. They're watching something. And you know what that something is? Kind of like that star. It's bringing them out of those places and it's bringing them right to where Jesus is. Pastor, this is different I agree but what drew those different kind of a people to where Jesus was what took them out of their eastern areas their eastern countries and brought them to where Jesus was what took them before a king who offered them things and said hey come what gave them the wisdom not to go back to him 
What gave Joseph the wisdom to go a different route? Somebody say amen. What gave Joseph the wisdom to listen to what the Spirit was saying? What gave Mary the wisdom to listen to what the Spirit was saying? What did that? Can I be real for a moment? I mean, I think it took people, except for maybe Joseph and Mary, because they were taught right. It took some people, Steve, who didn't really know a whole lot about the Bible. Pastor, that doesn't make sense. You said you were an atheist, right? When you knelt down and you said that prayer to this imaginary God, and you said, if you're real, prove yourself to me, was there a scripture verse running through your mind? Isn't that interesting? Pastor, are you saying we don't need to word? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. But Donnie, you know what I am saying? <laughs> the Spirit gets to the people when he wants to get to the people. Somebody say amen. He speaks to them on a level, Lori, that they understand. And Brian, when he makes himself real to them, must have been something amazing, huh? To make you to believe in him. Something amazing must have happened, Jack, for him to get up and say, I'm going to church and I'm not going to miss a service. Amen. I'm going to push my wife to get up and sing. Somebody say amen. I, you know, I, I'm going to correct my children when they're misbehaving in the house. Of God. I'm going to do all. What, what happened? Something, Robert Needham, was revealed to them and revealed to them in a way that they couldn't refuse it. And that's why I believe those three wise men, if you will, those magi, those two wise men, I've heard it argued many different ways. I believe that's why when they saw the star, something inside them said, we got to go follow that. We got to go follow that. And can I tell you what's happening right now, saints of God? The Spirit is speaking loud and clear to those that will listen. The Spirit is revealing himself to those people that will open their eyes and see him for what he really is. Can I tell you what my spiritual man sees? If we pay attention to what's going on around us, If that spirit, Jen, that pushes us to sing and assist with skits and plays, if we will listen to what the spirit is saying, if we will follow the footsteps that he is laying out in front of us, I honestly believe we will be led to something amazing. I believe that the Son of Man is coming back very soon. The Son of God is soon to return. But can I tell you, Brother Roger, what I believe is going to take place before he shows up? The Bible tells me that there will be a revival in the last days. I learned a long time ago, Dave Turner, that that revival, Amanda, is not a series of services. Somebody say amen. It's not me getting up one time, Dave, and saying, guys, we're going to go into a revival. We're going to have revival until the spirit falls. I don't believe it's that. I believe there's going to be a revival take place in the hearts and souls of men and women and children everywhere. And how does that happen, Brother Roger? Something is going to speak to them. Brother Ed? Something is going to draw them up out of that bondage, out of that miry clay, whatever you want to call it. It's going to draw them up out of it, and it's going to use them for miraculous things. What else do we hear about the wise men after these scripture verses? Not a whole lot. But what are they known as? Smart people. Smart, weird people. Any smart, weird people in this room tonight? Amen. Let me word it this way. 
any people still believe in the Holy Ghost of God in this room tonight? Will you stand with me, please? A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. Does that sound familiar? The Bible talks about Jesus splitting the eastern skies one day. Amen. You've heard me say it already a couple times tonight. That's soon. I believe it's soon. You know what else I see if I read these scriptures slowly? The stuff that was taking place during this time, the mocking of the church. How many of you know the church is being mocked today? Church is being laughed at today. The spiritual leaders of the church. I'm not a doomsdayer. I'm not a naysayer. I'm not a negative person about the church. I'm not. But some of our spiritually elite, they're missing it. Their eyes are focused on the wrong thing. Dave and I have talked a couple times about some of these events we've gone to, boards we've sat on, heroin task force, drug task force, I forget what it was. Their answer to the heroin problem in this area is posters in schools. Please don't take this wrong if you really liked it. But when you go to an event that's supposed to be for heroin addicts, and the church people are up dancing around like it's a rock concert, they're missing the point of why they're there. They're missing the point. You hear what I'm saying? When I'm standing there and I can look down and I can see a heroin addict sitting there, and I can tell he's a heroin addict, and all these Christians walking around him not even seeing him. I'm looking at it. I can see him. He's like right here to there. And all these Christians walking by him. And Brian, they can't even see him. I think the Spirit speaking, some of us just ain't listening. Some of you have said it to me recently, you know, Pastor Wayne, I'll be in church and I'll feel the Spirit moving up on me, but I'm afraid to do anything because I'm wondering what the people around me are going to think. The Spirit speaking, but we're not listening. Pastor, where are those great outpourings? Where are those revivals in these last days? The Spirit's trying to do it. We're not listening.